artists and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking all about brush care and the steps to ensure that your watercolor brushes last you for years to come. Okay, so generally speaking, I'm pretty relaxed in terms of art technique and don't really like to lecture artists about what they should and shouldn't do with their art or their supplies and how they work. Because after all, you know, we're all artists, right? Everyone approaches how they do things differently and uses their tools really differently based on, you know, your own style and your technique and that kind of thing. However, I will say that caring for your valuable art supplies, um, there are definitely some steadfast rules and best practices, I'll call them, to maintain and keep your brushes in tip-top shape. First of all, let's talk about how you use your brush because that can definitely affect the longevity and quality of the bristles in your brush. As a general rule, you never want to, you know, squash your brush against your paper and, you know, crush the bristles close to what's known as the ferrule, which is the silver part of the brush um, that holds all the bristles together. There's no need to squash and mutilate your brushes like that unless you're doing something, you know, pretty crazy and specific with your art. You're not going to reap the benefits of your beautiful brush and you're probably not going to get the most beautiful quality brush strokes that way. So while most people are not guilty guilty of this cardinal sin when they're painting on actual paper, a lot of people, more than you'd think, are guilty of doing that when they're actually cleaning their brush in a jar of water. It is completely unnecessary to squash the bristles at the bottom of your water jar, and a light swish in water followed by a paper towel or even just running the bristles up the side of your water container should be more than enough to clean it properly. You also don't want to leave them soaking in your water for an extended period of time. So it really should just be a dip in the water, straight out kind of thing. No lingering, no hanging out in your you know, water jar or container because over time that's going to destroy the glue that binds all of your bristles together and deform the bristles themselves. So what do you do? Just a thorough swish in water and then blot with a paper towel and that's enough. When you're done with your painting session, here's what I recommend and what works for me. Depending on your brush, you want to try to shape the bristles into the shape of how that brush was when you first purchased it from the art store. That way, when the brush dries, it can retain that nice new shape that, you know, is the, the shape that you wanted when you bought it. Um, this is specifically helpful for round brushes, which have a habit of getting, you know, a little blunt and mis misshapen, especially on that finer tip. Before you put that brush or those brushes into your brush holder though, stop. Don't put them in there while the brush is still damp. The humidity in those bristles has a habit of sinking into the ferrule of the brush where they're being held together by a special kind of glue. So allowing that moisture to leak into that area will definitely cause that brush to degrade over time and eventually for your bristles to start falling out of your brush, which is particularly annoying if you're in the middle of a painting and you've got a beautiful area that you've been working really hard hard to perfect and suddenly a couple of you know hairs start falling out on it and you have to like fix it. So definitely one good reason to take really good care of your brushes is to avoid situations like that. So what do you do instead? I suggest just letting your brushes dry horizontally on your table or your desk and once they're dry then it's totally okay to put them back into your brush holder. Now every now and then you might want to do a deep clean of your brushes if you notice buildup forming and this isn't typical um, or typically the case for watercolor brushes. So if your primary medium is watercolor, I don't think I would worry so much about this part, but if you use gouache or other mediums on your brushes, you definitely want to do this maybe, you know, once a month or so. So you can buy some of this, which is the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver and just follow the instructions on the packaging for how to use it. So basically you just swirl your brush in it and allow it to soak into the bristles before you just rinse it out. 
Alternatively, if you don't have this product or access to it, um, I have a little tip that I picked up throughout the years from a friend of mine who was a makeup artist and she used this on her really high quality brushes. And that is to use baby shampoo. And if you think about it, baby shampoo is really delicate and made to be used on the most sensitive hairs and skin. So what I do is put a couple of drops onto a small tray or ceramic and then add a small amount of water and then I'll lather my brushes in them and let them sit for about five minutes or so before rinsing them off. Quick note though is do not use a two-in-one shampoo or anything that contains conditioner because that's going to change you know the surface of your brush and kind of make it a little bit more oily. So do not use that. Just use a straight up baby shampoo. So that's pretty much it. And while it may sound slightly high maintenance, I consider it more of a lifestyle choice. And once you get the hang of it and you know it becomes second nature to you, you won't give it more thought and it'll just become part of your routine and become more automatic. And I think the great thing is that your brushes will thank you for it by staying really springy and well-shaped and you'll be able to enjoy them for years and years to come. So that covers it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're enjoying this channel so far um, with all the art videos and tutorials and swatching videos. Um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you are because it really helps me with being able to grow this channel into something bigger and to be able to give you more content and more things that you love, hopefully. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me and I will see you next time.